scriptures tell us in the book of Genesis that when God created man, he said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. This tells us that man is like God and the angels in being spirit because of our rational spiritual soul. In human procreation, the mother and father do not produce the child's soul, since the human soul, unlike the life or soul of other living things, is spirit and does not have material parts. It does not arise from matter. Each human soul is created directly by God. Man's rational and spiritual soul makes him capable of reflecting God and of responding to God in knowledge and love. Then we read that the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. This tells us that man is by nature both body and soul. We are spirit, but we are also material and embodied. Our material bodies connect us to the rest of material of the material world, both living and non-living. Here I wish to explain Catholic teaching regarding the scientific theory of the evolution of the human race from other species. The Catholic apologist Frank Sheed put it this way, Genesis speaks of two elements, earth and the breath of God. The Lord God formed man of the slime of the earth and breathed into his face the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. Did the word formed mean one single instantaneous action, or could it mean a long process, animal bodies slowly developing under God's guidance until at last one was evolved capable of union with a spiritual soul? Obviously the word formed could mean either. Of itself it does not tell us. Nor does the Church. Catholics may, if they will, believe in an immediate creation of the human body from elements in the earth. They are allowed to believe in an, in an evolutionary process by which the first human body comes from the earth by way of other animal bodies. What they must not deny is the immediate creation for the first man and every subsequent man of the soul. The soul, being a spirit having no parts, cannot evolve from some lower form, It can exist only if God creates it. So Catholics have freedom of scientific opinion about the evolution of species and also about the possible evolution of the physical aspect of our humanity. As a Catholic, you are free to accept or to reject the various theories of evolution of biological life. However, however, whether one accepts or rejects the idea of human evolution, two things are certain. First, by our rational spiritual soul, humans are unique. And, second, the matter of our bodies is drawn from the same stuff as the rest of the created world. In our human nature, there is both a spiritual and a material element. Since man is composed of both spirit and matter, he is, in a sense, at the center of the universe, that is, at the intersection of spirit and matter. Man is the lowest of spirits and the highest of animals. In human nature, as God created it, body and soul form a unity. Man lives in both the invisible world of spirit by his soul and in the visible world of matter by his body. The body is material and is therefore subject to the same physical laws as other things made of matter. Death, the separation of human body and human soul, was not God's original plan, and our hope is not just the salvation of our souls, but the resurrection of our bodies. When man offers his whole self to God, he offers all creation within himself, since man recapitulates or sums up within himself all of creation. Consider the world of spirit. Man is like the angels in being created spirit. Consider the animals. Man is like the animals in having physical sensations and feelings. Consider the plants. Man is like the plants in having organic life. Consider matter. Man's body is composed of the same kinds of chemicals that make up the rest of material creation. There is another important thing that follows from this truth about our humanity. 
Man is a microcosm of the universe. What does microcosm mean? A microcosm is the whole world in miniature, in a concentrated symbolic form. The poet John Donne once put it this way, As man, I am a little world made cunningly of elements and an angelic sprite or spirit. Because man is both spirit and matter, the human race is meant to be the priest, that is, God's representative and steward of the created universe. We as humans were made to be the connecting link that joins the world of spirit, that is, of God and the angels, to the rest of the created world. As human beings, our natural life makes it possible for us to live our bodily lives and to think and love on a human level. However, God wants us to have more than that. God wants us to receive the beatific vision, the blessed vision of God himself in heaven forever. If angels and men are called to the life of heaven and the beatific vision, then we must be fit to live the life of heaven. Let me give you an analogy made famous by the Catholic apologist Frank Sheed. Suppose you were given a free trip to another planet with a totally different atmosphere. It wouldn't be a good idea to go on that trip if you are equipped with only your human breathing apparatus, since this would be totally inadequate in a different atmosphere. Our lungs are suited to life on this planet, but not to life in a wholly different atmosphere. In a similar way, we must be fit for heaven and the beatific vision by having supernatural life, grace, within us. Our merely natural life is insufficient. We lack the power to live the life of heaven. The problem is that many people see heaven primarily as a reward for good behavior. That is not wrong, but it is not the best way to think about it. Heaven is indeed a fitting reward for faith that works through charity. But more importantly, heaven is the result of what takes place in this life, of the kind of human beings that we have become by our life's end. If Christ's free gift of supernatural life, his grace that flows from the cross, is in us, then we shall have become heavenly in our souls, and to heaven we shall go. If we have shut out the grace of Christ at our life's end and have become hellish inside, then to hell we shall go. Our salvation is the final effect and fruition of Christ's grace in us. When God works upon our human nature, he takes into account the kind of beings that he made us. We are embodied and social beings, so our Catholic Christian faith is embodied and social as well. Most wondrously of all, God became man, became one of us in body and soul, for the salvation of both body and soul, so that the fallen family of Adam might become the church of Jesus Christ, who is the new Adam of a restored humanity.